So now let's discuss uh, discovering SQL servers in a network. So uh, to discover a SQL server in a network, there are three um, known techniques. The first and the uh, very uh, well-known one is the port scan. That is, we can look for port 1433, 1434, TCP, UDP. Uh, it can be done by any user, of course, connected to the network. To discover those SQL servers, only those ones which are listening on a network port. Uh, then there is local enumeration. If you have access to, if you get access to a computer or a box, and you, you would like to enumerate the instances running on that machine, uh, local enumeration technique and techniques can be used. Then there comes domain enumeration, where we scan for service principal names, that is SPNs registered with the domain controller or domain controllers to look for SQL servers. So let's have a look at uh, each one of these one by one. For the port scan, of course, we can use well-known tools like Nmap, etc. But because uh, we are focusing on such scenarios where we may not have the ability to install tools, which is, of course, in, in a red team operations or in, in a normal pen test as well, you're not supposed to install tools on a box, uh, especially tools like uh, uh, the, the tools which we use in offensive security or in security assessments, which are considered double-edged swords. That is, if even if you install tool for good, an attacker, a real attacker may use those tools for bad. So it is generally discouraged to uh, install tools on a box. So we'll stick to PowerShell scripts, which can be executed from memory. So of course we can use invoke port scan from Nishang, uh, get SQL instance, uh, instance scan UDP from a power up SQL can be used as well. So let's try get SQL instance scan UDP and see what uh, it shows us. So let's import module. And let's run this with Verbosity on so that we can see what it is doing. Uh, okay. Of course, we need to provide it our computer name. Let's and that's, uh, that is the beauty with uh, uh, SPN scanning, which we are going to uh, try later on. So here we need to you know, specify a particular. So uh, there is no SQL instance on this IP. Let's try a name. No. No results, so which is fine. That means there may not be a SQL server on these IPs. Uh, a good way is, uh, I don't think if this is script is there on that box, let me put it there. So please keep in mind that I'm using the scripts from from the disk because uh, this box is our uh, is our attacking box this is our own box we can save uh, scripts to disk here safely also uh, i'm loading scripts from disk for the sake of demonstration and uh, discussion uh, you are not supposed to save the scripts to the disk on a target box as long as possible so if I load this script, uh, I know an IP where our SQL server is hopefully listening. So 
let's see if we get an output here. Support 1433 here. That means there is a SQL server here. So just a quick example of uh, how we can do port scanning to identify SQL servers. But on a flat network like this, what I really like to use is this, and I've only recently discovered this. Uh, a very useful method. So uh, what we are doing here, we are using the uh, SQL data source enumerator class. Uh, so we are calling a .NET class. This special operator allows us to load uh, static methods from a .NET class. So what we are doing from this class, we are loading this static method. What this method does, it sends a broadcast, a UDP broadcast on port 1433 or on port 34, one of the ports. And all the SQL servers from, so the, in, in the lab we have from SQL Server 2012 to SQL Server 2017, uh, SQL Server 2016 and 17 as well, all of them respond with, uh, with, a, with a yes or something so that we know that there are five uh, SQL Server instances in this flat network because this is sent to the local broadcast only those sql servers which are in the uh, which are within the reach of the broadcast respond to this nonetheless a very useful method to discover sql servers in the local net now if we have access to a box where a sql server instance is running and we would like to enumerate instances not the sql server but the instances of the sql server then we can use the SQL PS module. SQL PS module is available on all the boxes by default where a SQL server instance is running. Please keep in mind that this works for remote server as well, but it needs admin on the target box. Uh, this uh, command or this module uses WMI in background and therefore we require admin privileges to use it on to the remote box. So let's see if I can use it here it, I think the module would be available on this box right now I can simply use something like this and that's the uh, beauty of uh, PowerShell you can see that we are now browsing the SQL Server store SQL Server as it is a file system. So, uh, okay. So there's there's a tab in the slide, which I'll correct right now. So, if we run this, we find out that there is a local machine, a local instance called or local va uh, SQL server called OPSMS SQL and here is the instance name so that is how we can one of the ways of enumerating instances on a box we put in the module after importing the module we can browse through the SQL Server as if it is a file system and we can discover instances. Another way is to enumerate using services, something like this. So get service is a commandlet in PowerShell which is used to retrieve information about services. It supports a parameter called name, which can be used to get a service with name. It accepts wildcards as well. So, uh, what is the instance here? This is the instance. Another method is to extract. So, so I've picked it up from the PowerShell magazine to extract the information from registry. So. SQL Express. 
So this is useful in case you have access to a box and would like to extract name of the instances. Mostly useful in case of, uh, let's say you, you got a reverse shell using a SQL injection or uh, you got a command injection on a box where a SQL server is uh, running and similar scenarios. Of course, Power Up SQL can be used for uh, local enumeration. It also uses services for that. Now, the next enumeration technique is domain enumeration. We are going to use SPN scanning for that. What is SPN? As SPN or service principal name, it is a unique identifier of a service instance in an active directory forest. That is, uh, our SPN is unique forest wide for any service. Therefore, SPN scanning is very useful in discovering services quietly, reliably, and without having any special privileges in the forest. So how, how we run for, uh, we search for SQL services or SQL servers. Uh, we can look for any machine account if it has the attribute service principal name is equal to MS SQL, whatever. Uh, we can simply run this in, in uh, this into any LDAP search uh, tool and it will be possible for us to list all SQL servers. We can also use get SQL instance domain from uh, Power of SQL. That is the one which we are going to use right now. Get SQL instance domain. Please keep in mind if I'm not specifying uh, a command let uh, to be from any other tool, it would be from Power of SQL. So if I run get SQL instance domain right now, uh, we have multiple SQL servers running here. Uh, ops file two two instances running there. See, it's a SQL Express. Apparently, because there is an instance, then ops ms sql ops sql srv1 uh, ops sql srv prod. So there are multiple uh, sql servers running. And you could see that this was really fast, and all we needed to do was to contact the domain controller and ask for all those uh, machine accounts or user accounts which have their SPN. Now property set to MS SQL. That is all about discovering, enumerating and scanning SQL servers uh, in a network and in a Windows domain. And this brings us to our first hands-on. Discover instances of SQL server in the target domain using various enumeration methods. Uh, so oh, very uh, vaguely said because uh, if you are doing it in, uh, if you if you are going to use my labs, in, in that case it would be specific that discover instances in this particular domain. But if you're using your own lab, just just for the sake of that, I'm saying here uh, try it in target domain. So whatever uh, that is your first hand on. Just have a look at uh, different methods which we have discussed and use them. Compare the results to see if you missed something or you uh, got something. You know, it's your uh, hits and miss and uh, compare the results. So that would be all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.